boom yes folks you may again so in this video we're going to talk about the present situation as obtains to cxc where the exams are concerned for may june 2020 so as most people would be aware by now the cxc have postponed the exams although they didn't really say it as precisely as that but that is what it amounts to a postponement it has been postponed until and they are saying tentatively july 2020 depending on what happens with respect to all the other governments in the region right remember cxc is not like the uk where you have one body and you have one basically it's one territory right so they could just make a decision and just implement it immediately with the cxc you have a whole set of independent sovereign governments all over and they would have to co cooperate and collaborate with all of these different governments these member territories as we call them before they announce any initiative and before they implement any any initiative <coughs> right so as most people would also be aware by now the cxc is proposing to use multiple choice as uh, assessment as the center centerpiece the cornerstone of the assessment in this particular situation that is so different to anything that we would have had before all right and i just want to read exactly what they say so that we could tailor the discussion around that they said consequently the council has made the policy decision to offer a modified examination process as follows one administration of at least one common paper multiple choice assessments two school-based assessments sbas and paper three alternative to sba for private candidates so in other words the students who in school will have the sba which most people would have already handed in and then the private candidates would have the paper trees and then the third point would be that they would award final grades based on the moderated sbas and multiple choice papers <coughs> And then they went on to specify three exceptions that would need something a little more than just the multiple choice. They say the following are, accept are exceptions where candidates will be required to complete additional components. You have the modern languages, Spanish, French, and Portuguese, human and social biology, commonly known as HSB, and the visual arts. So those people will take care of their thing I will just talk generally and I'll use my maths as a general example all right <clears throat> so let me talk about this how they're doing this thing right because a lot of people will have a lot of different opinions all right right we see a lot of different opinions being expressed with respect to the SEA and we also would have the same thing applying to the CSEC and the KEEP good in the last paragraph on page one of the release it says this strategy will employ the e-testing modality online and offline all right in order to reduce the examination administrating processing time so forth and so forth and so forth and so forth all right so in other words the cxc priority at this time seems to be everything else allowing of course if they could get this thing done have the exams done and then have the results available by the end of august going into early september right that would allow for people to start the university that would allow for people to get into jobs and for any other process that would have been hanging in the balance pending the results of the may june exams now if for some reason that is not possible right? if this corona thing goes on a bit longer than people hoping and expecting it to go on it, it, it would mean then that exams in july may not be feasible as well in which case we'll have to push back past september into october november right maybe even as far back as january right because as far as i am aware in the case of the uk they have a november exam a june exam and a november exam so they have the 
up, they have the option of doing a November exam that will just fall in with their regular timetable. Um, with the CXC, we have January exams for some subjects, not all, right? So even if they're doing it in January, it would still require some adjustment. If they're doing the exam in September, October, or November, it will require more adjustment. If they're doing it in June, as we are assuming here now, one of the main adjustments we're talking about is this e-learning thing. <coughs> All right? So back to the topic of the e-testing modality. They said in the first point that they will have the administration of at least one common paper. So with that point alone, we have a point that we could use to generate a lot of discussion because a lot of people are wondering right now if the students will still be allowed to go to an exam center given the current prohibition on social gathering that exists all over the Caribbean. So that is one thing we had to wait until July to find out. Right? Now, if it is you're doing this online thing, right? The administration of a common exam, and we're not talking about common to one school, we're not talking about common to one country, we're talking about common across a range of countries in different time zones, right? As far as I'm aware, Jamaica and Belize are, Jamaica, well, I know Jamaica is one hour behind the Eastern Caribbean, I'm not too sure about Belize. So the issue of an administering a common test across the region, right, is it that everybody will be able to do this test simultaneously? Because if it's a common paper, common meaning everybody doing the same set of questions, then the only way to guarantee the integrity of that process is to have everybody do the exam at the same time, right? Now, as it stands now with the paper-based exams, we, we know that exams are the same time across all the territories, right? So, if you have a maths exam at 9 o'clock, the maths exam is 9 o'clock regardless of what country you're in. And in the case of the countries like Jamaica and Belize, where you're a little behind in terms of the time, my understanding is that they don't allow students to leave the exam room until one hour. So in other words, if you start the exam at 9 o'clock in Guyana or Barbados, right, and I'm using the countries at the extreme, to the extreme east now of the Caribbean uh, community. <coughs> if you start the exam at 9 in Barbados, you don't want a situation where somebody, for whatever reason, decide them finish at half past 9 and they leave the room and they go on the phone and they start WhatsApping the partner in Jamaica where it will be 8.30 and they will still have half an hour before they go into the exam. Right? So you let a whole hour pass so that they leave the exam in the Eastern Caribbean at 10 at which point the Jamaican students will either already be in the room or now about to enter the room. So that way you, you could get around the whole question of electronic communication across the islands, which is so much more of a factor now than it would have been, let me say, 30 years ago when CXC was still in its infancy, so to speak, <coughs> right? Um, so are we going to have the exam like that? And if we administer the exam, come to everybody across all the territories at the same time, if we're doing this in an online environment, then what about the infrastructural requirements to have computers available for all the students? What about the infrastructural requirements of internet connectivity? Right? First of all, the availability of an internet connection. Right? We, we know that not all schools have internet. And even if we have a situation where all the schools have the internet, what about the quality of the connection, right? Some schools will have a faster connection than others, right? Some islands might have better internet connection than others, right? The internet speed and that kind of thing. So you have all these variables to consider 
if you have to administer an exam in an online environment, a common exam, right? Because if we say that we have in a common exam and everybody not getting the exam at the same time, then what's the point of having a common exam? Right? The, at that point, it means that somebody will be doing the exam. If you're not having the exam simultaneously, it means that somebody or buddies will be doing the exam before some other buddy or buddies. Right? And there will be more than sufficient ways in which the first buddy or buddies who do the exam will be able to communicate to the buddy or buddies coming after who come to do the same exam that they just finished doing. And I mean, we know how it is with 16 year olds, 15, 16, 17, 18. They will find a way to communicate. Do not underestimate the ability of teenagers in a situation like this if you don't put sufficient measures in place to communicate to each other. So in other words, if you're having a common exam, it's either they're doing the exam simultaneously, in which case we would have to deal with all the logistic issues that we just discussed that would pertain to an online internet-based scenario, or you have a situation where they're not doing it simultaneously, in which case you have the other problem now of having to deal with communication between different groups of students. <coughs> All right? So you see the kind of issues we had to deal with now, where we're talking about the common paper. Let me talk now about the paper that is not common. <coughs> so as is the case in the online environment, and I would have had some level of experience in this from my time working at the University of the West Indies where you have you do a course and you have um, a group of questions you have questions and you have let me say you have ten people in a class and let me say you have twenty to twenty five people that would be the normal size of a tutorial class right and everybody have Everybody will have this online quiz that they have to do. And of course, in a situation like that, you know the students will collaborate with, with each other. And you, you realize eventually that, that way. My questions are different from your questions. And you over there have a difference in the questions as well. And then you'll realize that there will be some questions that will be common to different students. And then there will be questions where each student have a different, there'll be, there'll be instances where each student have a different question. So in other words, that is one way to get away from the whole question of wholesale copying. So I do the paper before, in other words, you have a group of students. They get the, they get the best student in the group to do the paper first, right? Or they get somebody from outside to do the paper, maybe a friend or a math teacher somewhere or something. <coughs> and they would do the quiz. Let me see the quiz have 10 questions and they get 9 out of 10. So you know the correct answers for the first 9 questions and then because they get one wrong, you have the opportunity now to work out the correct answer and then you transmit that to everybody else and then everybody else get 10. Right? You could do that in a situation where you don't have a common paper. <coughs> now in the environment where I would have encountered that, working in your way. Uh, those quizzes would be just, each of those quizzes would just be about maybe 1% of the overall grade or maybe 2% for the most. Right? And maybe you would have had 7 or 8 quizzes at 1% each so that when you finish all those 8 quizzes, that's a whole total of 8%. So in other words, the administrators of the exam give that out knowing fully well that some level of collaboration some level of collaboration will take place. And you, you don't mind that. It's, it's almost as if you give away 8% of the marks. You say, all right, all you hold that. Right? Because you know that coming down to the end, you have your coursework exam, you have your midterm, and then of course you have the final exam. So that even if the student is able to gerrymander a full score 
of 8%, right? It wouldn't really make a difference if you're having problems with the remaining 60% in your final exam, right? So in a case like that, yes, you could have four to give away 8% or 10% of the marks. That is in a university, that is a tertiary level environment. <coughs> if we talk in secondary school level now, where employers, where prospective universities, etc., are accustomed to differentiating one student from the next on the basis of a common exam that the both of them would have done then you have a problem there because if you are saying that as part of the adjudication process you now have a situation where we don't have a common paper right and that is implied in the language there they said at least one common paper which means that if they bring in something else you might have another common paper or you might have a paper that is not common All right so if the paper is not common, then you immediately have the problem of um, the differences between students. Because you're no longer talking about a 1% quiz in one single university course. You're talking about a whole exam. <coughs> right? You're talking about an exam that in a lot of cases could have a big impact on your prospects getting in to do certain other things that they want to do right so do you want in a situation like that to have a situation to have us to, to be in a to be in a place where um, one student could conceivably claim that they would have gotten harder questions than another student do you want to be in a situation where one parent or one group of parents could be able to say well my child had a different question to your child, right? I don't know if we want to be in a situation like that with this online thing, but I seen all of this at a point in time when six we haven't released the results of whatever it's not results sorry, haven't released the details of what they plan to do in terms of the format for this exam, and I guess they will have to do it at some point. And of course, even in the case where the exam or the paper is not common to all the students, then you still have to deal with all the issues of infrastructure and integrity that we would have discussed earlier in the case of the paper that is common even in the case where the paper is not common that in itself being an issue you have all the other compound issues of the integrity of the process because if you're saying that the paper is not common then it stands to reason that the requirement for the students to do the exam simultaneously or in the same place would be less stringent so in other words, maybe you're offering people the facility to do some component of the exam at home, right? Where the supervision may or may not exist, right? And we discussed that earlier already. So there's a whole potpourri of potpourri, potpourri, whatever. You know how these pronunciation things go, tomato, tomato, potato, potato, right? So that's basically it right the online thing it sounds good it it, it 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 hits the air in a kind of nice way we're gonna do online learning we're gonna go online but a lot of people do not understand that going online means that you have a whole set of other things that have to take place underneath that before you could go on the line <coughs> right and I'm not even sure that the people at CXC understand that and I'm saying that with the greatest of respect you know but I might be wrong who knows <laughs> right 
I don't even know that the respective ministers of education across the region understand the seriousness of what they say when they just glibly talk about we'll be going online in the next two years what that mean right okay if a European Minister of Education say that let me say the Minister of Education in Finland say that right Finland internet connectivity is 99 percent right I think if I'm not mistaken there's somewhere in their constitution where they enshrine internet connectivity as a basic human right right that is how seriously these countries take this thing I don't think we in the Caribbean anywhere close to that yet right we have a lot of teenagers on the phone and that is fine Instagram and thing but the requirements of taking an exam and administering an exam in an online environment are way 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 beyond just you go on a phone and you do it right there's so much things there that need to take place before you could seriously consider uh, having an exam in an online environment right and now we have a situation where prior to this um, my education minister in Trinidad and Tobago would have been saying that we're going online by 2022 and he would have been saying this without addressing the complex infrastructure and technological requirements that have to be in place to do something like this right so this thing is by no means a done deal it is not an easy feat right CXC has a really big job on the hand and they're still going through the process of coming to some kind of complete notion of what will be done so basically we have to look out for more of these releases from CXC because they still have to communicate to everybody else what they're going to do they have to filter down to all the different schools and whatever what each exam is going to be how it's going to be administered and then the respective administrators will then have to communicate that to their students in an environment where we do have a whole set of students coming to school to find out what so miss going to tell them right that communication gonna take place online too which in itself is another issue because if let me say we have a student in a rural area right or students in a rural area where we do have internet connection the, the simple thing of receiving the communication from CXC to the teacher to them that in itself is a logistic problem now now that we don't have a situation where they could just go to school and have the teacher explain to them what the situation is so you see what we're dealing with right it's not as straightforward as it as as it would seem so everybody trying their best in this circumstance and while CXC do whatever they do I want to take this time to encourage the teachers and the students again to keep preparing teachers have to adjust students have to adjust we all have to adjust so take care of yourself be good be safe don't do what you don't have to do and do what you have to do all right so see you in the next video